Hi everyone, welcome back to another podcast episode. I'm so excited to be filming this right now. It's so much fun. I what um wait what? <laughs> uh, what day is it? Uh, it is Friday, the 29th of July. No, that's not how you say it. July 29th, 2022, and it is 8 p.m. And uh, I've been working all day. I was working Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week at the Euro store uh, that I work at. 60, I don't know what it's called. So it is obviously a very nice job, but I am quite tired because um, I go up so early in the day to be able to knit for a couple of hours before I get there. So I am a bit tired, but um, I am home alone and it is Friday and it is almost podcast time. I did film uh, a video this week, my knit and chat, this Monday, I believe. So I thought it would be a while until I would film my podcast, but here we are. <laughs> and I just feel like I have to do it so I know where I'm at. I So yeah, I just started picking up things and writing down some of it like 20 minutes ago. So I will promise that I, maybe I'll repeat myself. Maybe I've told you something before and maybe I completely forget something I bought. Uh, we, I don't know, we'll just go with it and I'll fix that in the next episode. What do we have? We have two finished objects uh, for you and some whips, a lot of them which you have seen before most of them but some minor updates to them and some minor purchases not a super um exciting episode maybe but it's nice to just i just oh i just really wanted to film because i don't really know where i'm at i have found a perfect place for my whips um in this little footrest that i have with some storage and i just put them in there and forget about them so <laughs> um it's good that I can't see them for my uh, aesthetic, for the aesthetic of my room, but it's not good for me and my brain because I don't know where I'm at. So I put everything here uh, next to me. Oh, you can see it. I didn't even... <laughs> oh no. So let's just start with the first thing. I have showed you guys uh, this in my bonus episode because I had just finished it and it is my June top uh, in the yarn category by Noro in the color Naha. And yeah, you've seen it. Um, this was my second edition of the Yoon Top. I did do another one at first, if you guys remember it, but I ended up finishing this one before this one. I think I finished this a couple of days afterwards. I don't really remember. Uh, this one, however, is made with uh, Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. The white, well, it's two different colors together. It is the color Flade Cream. And the color is blue, ice blue. Let me just say, working at the yarn store, I've become an I know every single, okay, not every single one, but I'm getting there, of the um, Knitting for Olive color selection. I know all of the names of the, the yarns. So, like when I watch other podcasts and they use a Knitting for Olive yarn and they say the color, I know exactly what color it is. Just saying. Okay, whatever. Uh, this one, we talked a bit about the issues that I had with it. And um, for me, I am using Knitting for Olive Pure Silk for another whip that I'm gonna show you. And it is going really well. It is very too thin for me, really. Um, I'm not a super big fan of working with under three millimeter needles, but I am for that project. But the silk is really nice. It is not, I'm not gonna say that it's like wool, because it's definitely, not at all acting like wool but if you compare pure silk to do i have a skein no i don't if you compare pure silk to like um a linen yarn a cotton yarn it is not as tough even if i am knitting quite fast or just i don't really focus on my knitting and my tension it kind of relaxes really nicely and you'll see that later um but with this, two strands held together, it was a different story. I just thought it was kind of acting like cotton. It felt way more dry than it does single-stranded. So I did end up getting some um, rowing out, it's called. And I've used um, plant-based fibers like cotton and stuff before. And I haven't gotten that, so you can tell here at the top. 
I will say blocking helped a bit, but not entirely. Yeah, so it's quite a shame. And then I have it in some places like here, just like unevenness. But there is a bigger issue than that, honestly, and it is the size. I made a size large for both of these. And I didn't check gauge beforehand, but I did, um, I have this new awesome um, uh, gauge, gauge checker, which is like, um, it is a normal measuring thing, but it is like a square and you just put the square, you know what I mean. Uh, and I hit gauge with this one, but this one I was two stitches off. So this one is smaller. Um, I didn't hit gauge, which is a good thing because I've been wearing this a lot around the house uh, when it's been like really warm. Kakigori is, there's no wool in Kakigori, this yarn. I think it's mainly cotton and uh, other elements to it. Don't really remember, but it's been really nice. Um, this one, since I hit gauge, I should have done a size medium. This one is just way too big. One thing I did with both of these was for the straps here where um, you just knit back and forth. I knew or I know that with bras and tank tops and things like that, I always have to like tie my straps or like adjust them because they're always too long. So I follow the instructions for an extra small, but honestly, I should have maybe like cut out, honestly, like this much. Because this pattern is designed to be bra friendly with wider straps and it is, as you can tell here, you can see, it is lower in the back. This is the back. Um, but it still covers your bra. That's the design and that's why I was so excited about these. But since this is too big and I, with this one, it fits nicely, but I should have probably gotten rid of this much just because it runs down. Uh, it, you know what I mean? It falls down my little shoulders, which is quite annoying. And with this one, I can only wear it around the house because if I lean forward, the titties are out. I'm sorry. It's the truth. Uh, so, but it has been quite nice to wear over a t-shirt but it is not pretty so i don't want to go out with it so but yeah that's where we're at should have done a size medium happy about this one so that's just some um extra thoughts about my june tops and honestly with ravelry i remember when me and uh, coffee dolls started knitting around the same time i talked to kalila about ravelry because all the knitting podcasts would mention it at some point. So I, obviously I got it and I just never used it. I didn't understand the reason. Nowadays, me and Ravelry are like, we're this close. I spend so much time on that website. If you know what you're looking for, it is the best website ever. I remember telling Kalila that it's like an old people uh, website because it was just, it had nothing to it, I thought. So don't take offense to that. It is the best website ever. I tried different yarns because of it, whatever. Um, so what I've been trying to do, because oh, the peop the best people in this world are people who write thorough Ravelry notes on their projects. I love, if you're one of them, thank you for being the backbone for our society. Honest, thank you. I love you. Sorry, uh, yeah. So um, I have been wanting to become that person. So for my, one of my June tops, I did write notes for both of these, but for one of them, I wrote quite extensive notes, like tips, and I did it for my Ingrid as well. Like, I just wanna, if I have done something different or if I write something down that will help someone, I wanna do it. Uh, but only for the projects that's, um, if I haven't written anything, it's because I did nothing different, I didn't, notice anything wrong with the pattern, you know? So um, what I wanted to say with that is check my Ravelry if you want like more thoughts about um, the pattern. I did bring this because Noro Kakigori is a 200 gram skein for 
500 something Swedish crowns. Not dollars. I was about to say dollars and that would be horrendous. Oof. But 500 Swedish crowns. And it is 200 grams. As I said, I have used, I've made two swatches with that skein. And I've made this. And this is how much I have left. And I weighed it and it is 45 grams. Um, and it says that in my Ravelry. But if you don't want to check and I totally get it. You can get a size large June top and still have some left over. I am probably going to sell this uh, just with the yarn that I sell every once in a while. Um, but I also kind of want to make like a headband. Not a hat. I don't use hats. I don't use shawls. I'm not a shawl person. I don't use scarves, uh, gloves, nothing. Just sweaters. Only tops. So I might just be sending this, um, selling it with my other yarn. Uh, but that's where we're at and the other finished product i'm so excited i am so excited oh my lord if um yeah in the last episode i showed you guys the yarn that i had bought uh that i've been wanting since since i first checked out patina's website and i was finally able to find it and get it and it is noro and it silk garden sock solo i know it now I probably got it wrong because of that. <laughs> um, in the color Omitama S1. And here it is. If you buy a skein, it's not going to look like this. I took all that I have left over, uh, more into that later, and put it into a skein. This is exactly 100 grams, uh, which is insane. Uh, so the pattern calls for 400 grams of Noro. For the terrazzo sweater by Petinet, I should have said that. Uh, I bought this yarn to make the terrazzo sweater by Petinet. So I bought four skeins and I'm glad that I did, even though I only ended up using 300 grams. And I'll tell you why. Uh, but for this sweater, it's here. Should I just show it? Okay, yeah. Here she is. My terrazzo sweater by Petinet. And I'll have a picture up as well this I can't believe I finally made it and I got this yarn um, so I would be able to knit this on my vacation to Stockholm that I had earlier like two weeks ago now I should <laughs> I ended up getting uh, Miss Rona after that um, trip, more on that later, but so I only have bad memories. But before I got uh, Miss Rona, Miss Corona, I finished this. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I, I kind of lost my train of thought for a sec. And it is gorgeous. I, before going to Stockholm though, I wanted to find the perfect mohair for this and in my bonus episode, you saw me getting an order of drops mohair that I was hoping would work with this. It did not. I did cast this on. Um, oh, I don't remember, but I casted it on one evening, the, a day before I would go to work. And I saw that this yarn and the drops mohair that I had bought, number 12, uh, the color 12 beige. It just wouldn't work out. It became muddy. Um, it was quite gray, that yarn. And I specifically bought this color of Silk Garden Sock Solo because they have a very similar one in the color Mushroom, I think, that is more gray toned than... Uh, it has a gray beige and this has a white beige. Beige? White base. White base. Um, and the other one has a gray base. And I didn't like the look of the gray. So why would I choose a mohair that made it, made it gray? No. So the, I cast it on that night. I ripped it back. And the day after, I worked at the yarn store. And I knew that I was going, I was going to stock on that, af that day after. The day after? Yeah. Um, that morning so i needed to get some mohair if i wanted to work on this on my train rides up to stockholm and while being in stockholm so i got to work and it was uh, terrible i asked so many 
I posted so many stories of different mohairs and you guys answered differently every single time and I ended up choosing the one that you guys didn't vote for in the end um, but I'm glad that I did and I just I had to bring the skeins because I don't think you can tell um, that I used it this is knitting for olive mohair that we carry at the yarn store I work at in the color Vieta uh, wheat this one it was between this a wider mohair I think in the color Florida uh, cream I don't really remember honestly and something else like a but this ended up being perfect because the issue I had with the white mohair was that I just thought the halo became way too much it was too light oh the mohair almost took over when I've seen other people make it with white um, and I'm gonna show you here if you can see the halo I don't really know where this went like you can barely I thought maybe it would be too dark at first but I feel like this was the absolute perfect color to go with this yarn because it gives a lighter halo it blends in perfectly but it isn't too dark like this didn't change the color of the yarn and uh, the Nora yarn it just enhanced it and I'm so happy because I've been going on and on <laughs> with different mohairs and finally I was able to find something and yeah let's talk about the construction of the sweater I know that this has the same construction as the April cardigan and something else but I don't remember here's the shoulder I'm not gonna give more details than just show you how the sweater looks because I don't want to give it away uh, but it's a construction I haven't done before but as you know I love doing slipovers knitting them I've become very bored of it because I don't like picking up um, stitches for armholes that much anymore but I love the um, picking up uh, for the shoulders working the front connecting so I've gotten extremely bored of just the uh, making in the round stockinette sweaters uh raglan i'm sorry not not for now i i'm just in love with making a sweater in different constructions like this and it's nice to try different ones so i love this it went by so quickly i used five millimeter needles with this um i was half a stitch off like i was kind of there and maybe I could have gone up a 5.5 and it would have been like a tiny bit um, larger because I like the fit of this. I don't want to put it on because I'm feeling very comfortable in this one. Ooh, I should have told you what I'm wearing. Um, I'll talk more about this later, but this is my Louisiana sweater by Patina and the color doesn't exist anymore. I don't remember exactly, but it is Bush de Talpakia by Sun is Gone. And this is giving me so much nostalgia, this sweater. Nostalgia, you don't say, you don't pronounce it like that, but you know what I mean. Um, both this um, sweater and the color of the yarn, but yeah. Uh, I don't want to take it off, <laughs> so I'm not going to put this on, but I do have some pictures for you and I'll put them up. And I should have maybe gone with a 5.5 just to like, maybe it's a bit smaller um, since I didn't hit gauge perfectly. It is not too small at all. And it is not the perfect fit either. Like it is, it just isn't like this. This is very, very oversized, if you can tell. But this one is, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I maybe would have want, wanted it a little bit larger. This is a size large, so I already went up a size. So I was a bit surprised. I blocked it to make it fit better, and it really, really did. Uh, what I did with the length of this is, you know that I already shortened all of my sweaters. Um, but my Louvre sweater, for example, I never wear that one because it. I think I made it way too short. Um, so what I did with this was I had my Ingrid sweater with me to Stockholm. So I, and that one is like the perfect length for me. So I just, while I was knitting on the body, 
I just put this on top of the Ingrid sweater once in a while and I think I made it like two centimeters longer than the Ingrid um, and yeah it's a really nice length if I stand up like this um, maybe could have done it a little 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 longer add a centimeter but I'm happy with it it's gonna grow over time as well I made yeah you can honestly I could go on and on about the details that I made but check my Ravelry because um, it has more of the details that maybe you don't care about it has half twisted rib oh the biggest difference the biggest modification that I did was this has a twisted rib collar um, on the neck and I was not gonna do that so I did a half twisted rib instead which is do you call this a crew neck or a not a boat neck I think a boat neck is a wide one but I think this is a crew neck and it look I'm gonna put up a picture of how it looked before I put an elastic thread through it uh, it was horrible it worked but it was just kind of like standing out like this and you can see how much the elastic uh, pulled it together and it fits really nicely except for on the top of my shoulders it kind of just lays strangely but I always have my hair down so it doesn't really matter um, I don't really care about it. it it is so soft it's so soft uh, it didn't bloom a lot uh, with washing it bloomed like wool dust but not like a super wash yarn and um, maybe I would have liked it to bloom a little bit more but I'm very happy with it now one thing that I did do one thing I hate about me in my pockets is I I lift up my sweaters constantly so let's just put it there um, was with the yarn it was gorgeous but I did notice that it was quite stripey um, sometimes you would get a really really big section of a color and I've ripped back quite a lot with this uh, not big sections but rows just because I would start knitting and then I thought that it's starting to be like an entirely blue stripe now and I would just keep on going yeah I would just keep on going anyway but then I didn't like it so I have a picture of uh, what I did whenever I would notice that a big section of a color would um, start to come up I would just rip it all out um, cut it make that into a little skein and then attach with a magic knot and um, I'm very happy that I did because I constantly looked at my sweater it is the yarn is stripey that's the thing but it's like nice stripes it has the colors I didn't eliminate a color like you can see some neon green in there every single color is in here but um, especially for the sleeves like I had a section like this much that was brown and I just I ripped it out and yeah so I, I just played around a lot with um, the yarn itself to just make it perfect because this is a sweater that I've wanted for a long long time and I just really wanted to be happy with the result and I am and check my Ravelry for more <laughs> notes it sounds like I'm promoting a Ravelry but I'm not but it's just because I'm I might have written some things in there that I am completely forgetting right now so if you want more details I did write um, I wrote down how I did the neckline so check that out if you want to change that as well so yeah since I cropped it I ended up with 100 grams left over plus one and not one and a half skein about one and a half skein of mohairs left over but I'm incredibly happy that I had that extra skein because what I was able to do I cut the yarn so many times right and I could have I used this extra skein that I had um, to switch between the skeins right and get new colors it was I don't I, I can't explain what I did but I'm very happy that I had that other color so I had I think 50 grams left of the last skein this one and then I just um, attached all the little balls together and put them into this neat little skein and now I'll be selling this with when I have more yarn one thing I want to do is I really want to 
I feel like I just need to um, defend myself because the plan was to make the terrazzo sweater with Noro Kekigori but I said that the colors are completely different so I can't do that um, so I, I just want to really show the difference mohair everywhere sorry between the colors so this is Noro silk garden sock solo in the color Omitama gorgeous right? okay I'm gonna have to say like that oh that's so hard to say like this and this is Noro Kakigori. This one is more orange and blue. And this has a bunch of... See, this one is way more colorful. A lot of like blue and orange. It's like the same colors repeating and it's beautiful. However, this one, oh, see, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it is lighter. It has more life to it, and it's it's like a terrazzo. It's nothing like a terrazzo, but it you know what I mean. It has different colors. Sometimes it's stripey, but sometimes it's just it's like a hand dyed yarn. It's just pretty. are we done with my terrazzo sweater? I think so. We can go. On. I could go on and on forever. Um, but yeah, those are my finished objects. Um, two, I guess. So I ended up getting sick after Stockholm and my symptoms was that I was very tired, I had a headache, I had a fever, a lot of muscle pain. Um, I really thought I had effed up there for a sec because uh, like a couple of hours before I took a test because I got a fever, um, I had the most I told you guys that I have some pain, but it's not like excruciating. It's more when I knit, I get a little pain in my wrist and my fingers. And it's kind of just like, but I got the worst pain in my arms. And I thought that I had, I was never going to be able to knit again. But it turns out it was Miss Rona that made that. Um, so for two days, I had a lot of muscle pain in my entire body. Uh, so I couldn't knit. But then after that, I did knit. Uh, on and off though, because I was extremely tired and I only had the energy to stare into my wall for a couple of days uh, so we haven't done a lot with whips but what ended up happening was that with my project I remember what I was feeling what I was doing uh, with my projects um, I could name a bunch of memories to all of my knitted items so I didn't want to start a new whip when I was sick like that because I could I was only gonna think about that and I wasn't gonna like what I made Th does that make sense yeah so what I decided to do was just work on whips that I've ignored and uh, didn't get a lot done we but we did get some so let's start I'm just gonna get it so let, let me just get this one out of the way because I showed you this in my uh, not my bonus episode but the other one number six and it is my sunny sweater mohair edition i think i made like three rows of this um just for fun because it's a lot of fun to knit because this yarn is just wonderful to knit with this is i don't know why i'm closing my eyes but i just kind of had to feel it and i'll look i don't know why uh, drops kid silk is not my favorite mohair it is very prickly i would say um one of my most worn sweaters has it so uh it's not super prick i have so much mohair around me i it's getting everywhere i never have this issue but when i film podcasts and stuff i just throw my things around so much so um but with this it is so soft i can't say what it's going to be like when it's skin to skin but the yarn that I'm using is, I did bring it here, Drops Kitzel Mohair in the color light beige and a hand dyed yarn that I bought for summer knitting, but didn't end up happening. Don't, if I tell you guys I'm going to do something, expect the complete opposite. Thank you. Um, it is her, it's a base I hadn't tried before. It's 70% merino and 30% silk and you can tell the difference. 
Uh, her merino yarn is, it's not a chain, what is it called? A chain yarn? A chainette? I don't know. Uh, but it has more of like a ply, I don't know. It has more texture to it. And this one is kind of like her BFL base. Um, if you've seen those reels on Instagram with, I'm sorry, I have something in my, with a woman making beanies um think of drops snow if you know you know drop snow it has there are some wools that have a very specific texture to it and her bfl base was like that and this one kind of has the same uh i don't know how to explain it and i wish i could but maybe like i could find a video that i'm thinking of Anyway, it is so soft and it feels very different to just her 100% merino base. I don't know if this is super wash. It is merino super wash and silk. Um, and this is the cake. Um, it's in the color sandstone, if I didn't say. And it is like a white beige and it has some darker beige and some... You can see it, but literal gold. It looks like... Um, I couldn't describe the color as beige or pink. It is like, it isn't sparkly, but it is like a gold color in there. And when I was making the Sunday pattern up here, the yoke, when I was making a yoke, I was quite um, sad with my mohair choice because I feel like it completely took over and ruined um, the spottiness of it. You can kind of tell some in there. I, I'm not doing, I'm not alternating skeins or anything because the mower takes over, you can't really tell, but I do have some sections. I think you could see it there. Um, kind of see some of it, but here on the, um, stockinette section, it becomes more like you can see all of the different colors in there. The spot, uh, what is it called when it's like this? Speckles, the hand dyed speckles more in the stockinette and just the texture since this um it's a very thin yarn but it is this kind of texture that i talked about um drop snow like so it's just it's so soft and i cannot wait to wear this uh so we've only had a couple of rows uh, in and i'm not gonna show this again uh, until i actually start to work on it because i I don't know why I started it. I just think I didn't have something fun to knit on and I wanted to use the yarn. Um, and I'm happy that I did because now I have something this fall that I can just like pick up and start knitting and finish really quickly. And I'm very excited to do it. But now I do have some things that I need to finish and some other projects. So this is not like I started it and then I'm going to let it rest because um, I don't want to work on it. I'm just... I, I get very stressed when I leave things alone, um, but this one doesn't stress me. I'm just like, I know future me will be so thankful that I didn't work on this right now. Just because I'll be doing a lot of train knitting this fall and just, it's also just nice that I have like a backup. Let's say that I'm gonna, someone says, Let's ride a car for 10 hours. I do have a project that I can just knit and stock in it because I have a lot of things that I can't really just work on without the pattern. So whatever. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you it when I decide to actually work on it. And then another whip that I have. I showed, <laughs> I, I did skim through my last podcast. I don't watch it back. I just like skim through. I should write show notes every time, but it takes a lot of time, okay? um it's my cumulus tea and i told you in the last one that i bought three skeins of um, pure silk from the yarn store to make the cumulus top the tank top that she has but then i realized that i didn't want to do that by the way i've been looking for this pen for a week so i'm glad that i found it I've rooted up my robes and I've been crossing them off like this. I don't know why. Uh, but I ended up not wanting to make the cumulus top and I wanted to make the cumulus tee instead. When I bought the three skeins at first to make the tank top, 
two were in the same dialogue and one was not in the same dialogue. And I thought I'd just make the icon with it. So to start off, we have two different dialogues. And then it was different dialogues with the other extra two skeins that I bought. So I have a lot of different dialogues and I've forgotten which one I've used. I just attached a new ball, so we'll see um, if it's gonna become straight. It's just gonna be what it is, okay? It's gonna have to become whatever it becomes. Now, these are on 80 centimeter, 3.5 millimeter needles. Oh, I'm working on it, so I should be careful. Um, it's about over 400 stitches on here, so you won't be able to tell. If you compare this to the last podcast, you'll feel like I have done nothing. But here are all of my ropes that I've written up. And when I showed you it last time, because I started work so like that, because I don't want to give anything away or anything, but I've done all of these. So I had done almost half of these, only done half of what I need to do for the v-neck and then I picked this up when I was in quarantine and I only have 10 more rows until I attach to work in the round so and it's 400 stitches with it's not exactly 400 stitches but it's a lot of stitches and um, increases it's not difficult at all it's just a lot of stitches and like I said when I go below four millimeter, I don't really like doing that. I I wish I love doing it because the stitches become so pretty and it's not really that it, it takes a lot of time. That's one of the reasons why I don't like working with small needles like that, um, big projects like this, but it's that it's just not comfortable for me in my hands. Um, I just need to I got a text, sorry. Yeah, I just, um, I the way that I knit is my needles end here. I I grip it, not, not tightly, but I do hold my hands all over. That's why it doesn't really, tiny circulars doesn't really work for me. And nowadays I don't really enjoy 40 centimeter needles either. Like it's on the limit for me. Um, so what was I gonna say? Yeah, and tiny as soon as I go four four millimeter needles isn't really comfortable for me either. I just I need to grip on something. I need to have some stable m grip, okay? Uh I just there's not I don't like it. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's just not comfortable and I get pain. Um way easier which is sad uh so this has just been like a four rows at, at a time type of thing because otherwise my wrist will start to hurt so i am very happy that i picked this up for like three four days during quarantine i didn't have a lot of energy so i would like make one row go to sleep for an hour wake up do one more row but i did get some in and it looks like nothing but after this just a couple of more rows and then I attach in the round. So I have helped a family member knit one of these. Um, they're almost finished. They have one more sleeve left to go with there uh, and the eye cord on the v-neck. So, and they enjoyed it a lot. So I, I'm i thinking that I might ask them <laughs> to knit this for me. Like um, just the body, like help once in a while to just knit so I can get somewhere, but this will probably be finished. There's no reason. It's like August in a couple of days. How insane is that? How insane is that? Oh, anxiety. Like just August, really? Mm. I haven't done anything this summer. If we, uh, Okay, I don't even want to talk about it. So maybe next year, I don't know, but this will be like the Sunday sweater in a way. Because when I attach in the round, I have a lot, a long way to go for the body. Just knitting and knitting and knitting. So maybe this will still like, it may be December and I'll work on this just because I need to bring it to the doctor's office or something, you know? Uh, but the problem is that it's such tiny needles for such a long project because 
d my wrist cannot really handle it um so yeah it's funny how it is with people with smaller hands like um big needles hurt for my hands as well like uh, uh six seven millimeter and up it hurts my wrist and hands uh but a lot of people with tiny hands don't like six millimeter. you know what i mean for me it's smaller needles unfortunately I also think just it's maybe the way that I hold my yarn. I think feel like with English you don't really you like let's not get into that. Next whip. <laughs> I'm quite talkative today. It's my Ingrid slipover. Ooh, I need to show you guys this later. But not now. This I worked on as well during um my quarantine. I have this much left of the first game and um, I'm using, I'm knitting this up for the yarn store to have as an example because the pattern itself, the Ingrid Step Over, calls for one strand of Jensen by Isage and one strand of Mohair, but you can get the same, uh, this is not sponsored by the way, not at all, um, with this yarn, it's called Cumbria by The Fiber Co. And um, yeah, you don't need a mohair with this. You can get gauge for the Ingrid sweater and slip over with this. So she just wanted to have, because we have a lot of knitted um, things in the store, just so that you can like try on the yarn, um, you know, and just feel how it is on your skin, because you may think it's soft like this, but then like for me, for example, I just put this on my lap and it's itchy. I am not sensitive to mohair. I don't mind a little prickly, prickly prick, you know? Um, but rustic yarns, it is, I'm sorry, it is not my thing. I think we talked about it in my knitting chat. I just want soft stuff. And this is very soft, um, just feeling it like this. But just, I, I me, myself, I would not make like a Louisiana sweater with this and wear it maybe like a cardigan jacket type of thing um but just because I want pure softness for me but I don't think a lot of you would agree with me I think a lot of you would say that this is super soft it has let's see if I remember from my brain 60% merino wool mm. Probably 70% merino wool, I think. Let's just check to make sure. Um, because look, it's 90% wool, but I think it's 70% merino wool and then another wool and then 10% mohair. So it kind of has a little halo. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> um, so yeah, even though you don't have a mohair strand with this, you still get a bit of a halo to it, which is really nice. Even though I would not use this yarn on my skin for a soft sweater, I will say knitting with it is lovely, especially with metal needles. I love it a lot. And last time, I think I had only done the back. I don't know what I've done here. Uh, but what I did manage to get done in my quarantine, it looks so scrunched up because I have it on, you know, these. And it's quite loose, so I have to be careful. Um... I've started doing this, by the way, because I hate untying my stitch holders, so that's a tip for you. Just put a stitch marker. I, I've i done both of the shoulder sections, and I've started working here um, on the front section of my ingrid slip over. And this is how it's looking. This needs to be blocked, but it is beautiful. Yeah, and um, I will say I am excited to finish this, but um, Anna has told me that no stress with this but i'd like to like tomorrow use up use up this game at least the first game because as soon as i start working in the round that's i'm just i i've done the ingrid sweater i've done the ingrid slip over before and i've done a lot of swatches for it and just it's still a fun pattern but i kind of just yeah i don't know when i work on it it's fine it's just picking it up and starting to knit with it but i'm so excited to have something 
made by me hanging in the yarn store. And then you guys, when I finished it, you can come to the yarn store and try it on and judge how I weave in my ends. Don't do that because it's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, so that's where we are with this. And instead of when I got healthy, right? When I didn't test um, positive anymore, my knitting mojo came by like uh, back like that. And I thought that I deserved to cast on something new that I've been wanting to make because I really wanted to be finished with this uh, this time around because um, I'm just gonna try to show you guys what it's looking like outside. It is currently nine something. I don't. The sun is starting to go down. Sorry for the audio change there. My favorite time of year. I spend all year looking forward to the summertime and then it arrives and uh, I don't do anything. <laughs> it's too warm to do stuff. And now it's um, almost August and I have a lot of anxiety that I didn't appreciate summer this year. Um, but then again, the last two weeks it's been raining, whatever. But my favorite time of year is because of global warming, uh, summer lasts a long while nowadays. It starts quite late, like um, beginning of June, uh, late May maybe. But summer lasts a long time into the fall. Like I would say nowadays that August is just like a little colder July month. It's, it's still like summer, it's still green. And September is like... Um, a lot colder but it's not fall yet so um we have that's why it's my favorite time because i hate i love the sun i love the sun but i don't like the heat so my favorite time of year now i would say is august september because you get fall vibes but the sun is still out because i live in scandinavia and we romanticize summer with such a passion because of the sun because we spend like December, I remember, I don't know if it was last year or 2020, but we had like, in Gothenburg, we had five hours total of sun for the entire day of December or something. Like it was insane. It was just dark every single day. And yeah, come back to life. <laughs> I don't know. The reason why is I've been getting into not using mohair right now not because it's more fun, not because it looks better, because it's very practical for the months coming up. You want a sweater in August, September, but you don't want mohair because the sun is gonna warm you up. So um, I really wanted to make something a double Sunday, like just a, uh, a merino wool, but without the mohair. And you saw in my last episode that I decided to cast on buy double sunday to make the marseille sweater and then i got healthy from this rona and i thought that i deserved to cast it on and i did hello i have to be really careful carrying this to you guys because i've done a mistake and i am all my stitches are hanging on by a thread so i'm just gonna keep on talking while i put them onto the needle uh you saw me knitting this in the last knit and chat so but yeah it's my marsai sweater i'm using double sunday in the color light beige for the body like uh, the main color and then i'm okay i'm, I'm doing important work <laughs> and then i'm using the color sailor in the dark that she uses for the original one for the stripes what else? I am making a size medium because this one has a lot of positive ease. Maybe I would have liked to make a large to have it be even more oversized, but let me just fix this and then get back to you because I feel like this is not fun not having me look at you guys. The reason why I'm doing this is just because I know I'm gonna start throwing this sweater away, like throw it show you guys it like I do with my other things and I know my stitches will unravel to a point where I cannot save it so I'm just trying uh what I did was I forgot to make a decrease for the sleeve um so I just ripped back an entirely new stripe that I had made there we go okay now I can show you 
Let's see. I have some things to say about it. Here she is. It's the Mars size sweater by Petite Knit. And I am using a 4.5 millimeter needle, even though I made a gauge swatch, um, a beautiful one, just because I wanted to have like the stripes on the swatch. And I hit gauge on four millimeter needles, but I'm just so scared because I make all of my swatches um, back and forth. Because the only reason why I do swatches is for aesthetic reasons, not for functional reasons, which makes no sense. But I'm just happy that I'm doing something because this sweater is worked back and forth for up until the sleeve. So, I mean, I'm getting the gauge of something, but I did decide to go up to a 4.5 millimeter needle because I am a tighter knitter. I've gotten way better, though, way looser in my tension, uh, which is a good thing. So I could have done a 4, but I did a 4.5. Um, the fabric with a four was really, really nice. This is a bit more see-through, but it's fine. One thing about not using mohair that I don't like, it goes by faster because all of those times where you maybe like miss a strand that had to put it a back of mohair strand, you know what I mean? Um, it adds up, so it goes by pretty quickly. It's more uneven, like you can, but I'm praying that blocking will fix this. By the way, can you tell something wrong with the neckline? You can. Do you see that? I picked up a stitch too far down, so it looked kind of strange, and I tried to, like, sew it. Does it bother you guys? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, um, we've talked a lot, so I need to uh, get through this so we can get through the acquisitions. Um, the one reason that that I've been thinking about, and I've been looking through Ravelry a lot, a lot of different projects for this, is this shoulder section. I'm gonna show a picture of um, Bettina hers. I just wonder, what is that shoulder thing? It looks so holy, and I didn't understand it. And she used a Judy Magic cast-on or a provisional cast-on for a seamless transition. But however, with the German short rows and just the yarn that isn't very forgiving, it create it doesn't make it seamless. And I just didn't want to do a Judy cast on again and I tried a provisional cast on. It's not a it's not a big deal, but I was just not in the mood for it. And I saw that it's not only between knit sweater that has that almost everyone on Ravelry had it. So I just thought that, what if I do a long tail cast on anyway, like I always do, and just pick up for the shoulders instead of having live stitches and picking up them. It'll create a seam, but I'll have like things happening here anyway. So does it really matter if I have a seam as well? And then I read through a Ravelry project where it said that I kind of wish that I had made a long tail cast on so I had a seam that could hold on to the weight of the sweater. Because, um, and it just made so much sense to me. So I decided to cast on and I kind of just did a little finicky thing, like I had to change some things in the pattern, but it was quite obvious. So here's how my shoulders look. Here you go. So you can, it still has this unevenness, uh, but I don't think it's a huge difference from how it looks. Oh, I want to show it better on her sweater, you know? So, and I did have to go through the issue of, um, and I was talking to this with someone yesterday. I don't have my sweater here, but I would wear sweaters all the time before I started knitting. It was my favorite thing to wear. And one thing, Almost every sweater that you buy off of a store has been machine knit and it has seams, right? You can knit, you can't have a seamless sweater um, from a machine. If you think back to a time where maybe you didn't knit, did you ever look on your sweaters and think, ew, there's a seam there? Did you ever look at your knitted ribbing of a bought sweater and think that's so uneven. No. 
And I just had that realization this week that almost every single sweater that people are wearing out, people that are knitters, sweaters people buy from either like Gucci, they all have seams and there's nothing wrong with them. So I was, I was bothered by this for a while and just like, are people gonna think, oh my God, she didn't do a Judas cast on, who is she? And I ended up just, you know what? It has a seam and a seam is normal and it's not a big deal, right? It's so stupid. So now I don't mind it at all, actually. I'm just, um, I compared it to a lot of my store-bought sweaters and a lot of the seams there were like going zigzag y and things, but it's not a big deal. So that doesn't bother me anymore. It just feels more stable like this than if I would have made a cast. Yeah. And then you have the German short rows. And just as with my Louvre sweater that is without mohair as well, the stitches are so uneven. But what should I do? Like my German short rows, you can tell it here on the sleeves as well. But especially here. You know what? I'm just gonna pray to the blocking gods as per usual. I know it won't fix everything, but it might fix something and I'm going to wear it like this and I will never look at it myself. So yeah, um, one thing, the neck band, I did it a couple of rows shorter. This mistake that is bothering me as well. Um, and then I, in the pattern, it says to use the same um needle size for the ribbing as for the stockinette section and i used a 4.5 millimeter needle and I, as i was nearing the we've bound off the body as i was nearing the ribbing here i was thinking maybe i should go down to a four millimeter because it's already pretty like a little bit see-through so maybe but i was just i wanted to finish it that night so i didn't change the needles and i'm quite sad that i did because it's kind of see-through. It's not super bad, but it is quite uneven as well. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know why I've... You know, just mo I'm just so used to mohair and blocking and blooming yarn. Just, And now I feel like I'm judging myself way too harsh, but... Um, I'm. What I'm going to do is with the sleeve, I'm going to go down to a 4mm for the ribbing and see if it is nicer and then before blocking i'll see if i um maybe rip up the body ribbing we'll see um yeah it needs to be blocked as you can tell if i do it like this it just bunches in yeah it need, needs to block her i had to restart the sleeves because i uh, with German short rows, you know, you want to knit the short row stitch, the one you pull, and then knit a couple of more, whatever the pattern says to you to do. Last night I was so tired, but I just wanted to finish the short row section of the sleeve. Red flag, you shouldn't do that. Um, if you're so too tired and you want to finish something, you're going to make mistakes. Uh, not all of the time, but um, quite likely to do so. So I... Um, I was turning the jer the short row stitch and I was like, why is, it not, why is it not working? And I realized I had done it wrong. So I restarted, the, restarted it this morning and I've had some breaks today when I was able to. Um, I don't know if this is lining up perfectly. I did count the rows, so it should be, but we're just gonna go with it. Does it work? Get all right. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to get through my acquisitions before my camera dies. Um, it's not a lot of them. We have a little bit of yarn. If you saw my knitting shop video, you have already seen this, but I did get the new patina bag because I have this one and I absolutely love it. And this was a lifesaver in Stockholm on the train. Um, when we were on a picnic, whenever. This works as a, as a yarn bow. You, it's flat, so I could just put it everywhere. And my yarn and my mohair just 
had the time of its life in here and she released this and I had to get it. This arrived when I was in Stockholm so it was here when I came home. I could show you more. There's quite differences between these. It's bigger, it has different pockets in here but I don't have the time to show you right now. Um, kind of prefer the pockets in this one but I'm very happy to have an extra. And this is the smaller size. She came out with a bigger one, but honestly, you don't need that for a sweater. You can fit a sweater in here if you make around the same size sweater as I do. But whatever, we got that one. And in this one, I have some yarn for you. I, when I was tested positive, no, mm -mm 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 -mm. when I tested negative for Miss Rona, I went to a yarn store because I was planning <sighs> on filming for my Swedish yarn store series, I have two yarn stores down. Uh, next time I'll film for... It's not until the 11th of August that I'm working again and I can film. I thought I was working next week, but I'm not. We'll see. But for these... Um, a lot of yarn stores are closed as well. But I have gotten two down. I traveled four hours, uh, two and four hours back. Uh, to get this yarn store for you guys. So hopefully it turns out nice for my Swedish yarn store series. And the place is called Hunnalikan. I can't show you any videos right now, but you'll see them later. And she has, um, what yarn does she have? Tilia, a lot of Filkolana yarn. Um, some Sun is Gone. Some, um, uh, I don't remember. But she also had a lot of hand-dyed yarn. And I've seen her website before. And I've been so close to ordering from her website her hand-dyed yarn. But I've always been like, well, you're going to go there someday to film for the yarn store thing. So don't buy it yet. And I'm glad that she had the hand-dyed yarn I had been looking at. She had both the green one and the blue one I was looking at. But in real life, I like the blue more. And my grandpa gave me a little money because he wanted me to buy something when I was there as well. Um, so I was able to buy this. It is her sport weight um, hand dyed yarn. I it doesn't have a name on here, um, and there was only two escape left. So if you want to get the other two or something, uh, write a comment and I'll let you know what the name is of this one. Uh, the sun has almost set entirely, so bad time for me to show you this yarn, but. I feel like you can still kind of tell it is absolutely gorgeous and I didn't know what I was going to make with it but I did end up buying um I was thinking of only buying three but I bought four which is 1300 meters which is enough to make a sweater sport weights and I bought a pattern today that I think I'm going to make with it and I haven't seen a version of the pattern that I'm in love with but I am thinking of making some modifications and uh, yeah because as soon as I got home I went on to Ravelry to try to find a perfect project for this um, and I found a couple of um, sweaters but the one that I found that I bought the pattern for today that I think I'm going to try to make if it doesn't work out I'll just um, undo it it is the Ingrid mm -mm, Ingrid Summer Sweater by your Georgia fibers I'm sorry uh, so not the patina Ingrid another Ingrid that I've never heard before heard about before I think I've seen the Ingrid top but I didn't know it was named Ingrid uh, and it was just because I was looking through sport weight sweater patterns and I thought that I feel like that'll be good because I I have enough meter meterage to make one and I feel like I don't have to alternate skates. I was planning on doing that, trying it out, but I feel like I don't have to if I have that pattern because it has all these holes, you know? So I feel like you won't tell if it changes. Yeah, so that, I bought the pattern today. I'm gonna read through it. And I think this will be the next project that I cast on just because it, I really wanna buy more double Sunday and switch, make a lot of patterns that require fingering weight and a mohair weight because you know just so I can make more double sun I, there's not a lot of patterns with double sunday specifically uh, that I like so I think I'm just gonna go with a pattern that is a DK weight and just switch it out for double sunday 
But Double Sunday is expensive. I don't have the money for it right now. So I'm probably going to make the Ingrid summer sweater with this. So it'll be a little bit, I think it will be a perfect August, September sweater. Yeah, we'll see. My camera's about to die, which is like really sad because I do have some, I have some needles to show you, but yeah. Okay, we, maybe we'll talk about this more in the next podcast because my camera's about to die, but yeah, this is Isager mohair. No, I can't believe I said Isager. Um, Isager, the Americans are getting to me. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm disappointed the entirety of Scandinavia. I'm so in the color white. It was a sale. What was I supposed to do? I had fought the Isaga Mohair a couple of days before. I didn't buy I bought one skein for Tiffany Lou, but none for me. And then it went on sale, so I bought some. And it is the softest things I've ever felt in my entire life. Can you notice how stressed I am for the battery? It is so soft, so I did buy yarn without a project in mind, which is not good. That was not what I was going to do, but I'm very, very happy about it. And this will get a lot of use. Then yesterday, my plan, here's my wool comb, by the way. <laughs> uh, my plan for my needle review is that I, for example, bought these needles, which is seen it, fixed circulars in 4.5. And then today I got a package with a set of Haya Haya interchangeables though, so not fixed circulars. One pair with, uh, and I bought a cable because I do want to do a needle review, but I will not be able, pretty soon, uh, but I will not be able to buy sets for all of them. So I'm just going to buy, um, thing, does that count for you guys if I try out one with a project? That's what I'm planning to do. So I have a lot of, so I bought this at work. It's Moomt, their Oslo thing, which has these, and I've put in the stickers between it has for the needle sizes. I don't know if you can tell. I'm getting stressed. We'll talk about, I have a lot of needles that I've tried, but I won't give you a review now. We'll do that with my needle review. I'm planning, I'm gonna try these out. I'm gonna buy more, we'll see. Um, needles are my current obsession. I love it more than yarn. But yeah, that's where we're at. My camera's about to die. <laughs> so I'm very stressed. I hope I okay, gotta finish it. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you had a lot of fun. I did. It was quite chill today. And um, yeah, I'll see when this is posted. Hopefully before. So probably the beginning of August. We'll see. And hopefully the audio was okay. You wanna look? I've been having uh, the sunset all this time. So let's end this. Okay, you can see it.